The steps for painting with the mixer brush tool are outlined in the lecture, so I recommend that you print this slide so that you have it handy. Painting with the mixer brush tool is not difficult, it's just very specific. And so if you have this open, you can make sure that you're following the steps. In addition, on the previous slide, I, I've listed a few tips and tricks when you're working with the mixer brush. So let's review them before we jump over to Photoshop. Um, first and foremost, the mixer brush works by loading the color that you're painting directly from the picture instead of from the foreground color on your tools panel. So if you are to turn the load brush after each, each stroke option off, um, it will load the foreground color and it will mix the foreground color with the painting and it will be very frustrating. So you want to make sure that you always load the brush after each stroke. Uh, you also want to make sure that you're always using the mixer brush. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to show you when I jump to Photoshop is how to choose a brush and modify it while it's still a mixer brush instead of, of a smudge tool or an eraser or a regular painting brush. Um, you should also make sure that you clean the brush after each brush stroke. You can do this manually, which is not a good idea. It's, it's more work than it needs to be. Or um, you can just check a box on the options bar to make sure that your brush stroke will clean itself every time. Use the brush settings dialog to adjust basic brushes to create the texture that you want. Do not rely on the brushes panel because most brushes on the brushes panel are not meant to be used as mixer brushes. And then instead of trying to paint the elements, paint the texture of the elements. Use painterly brush strokes like cross hatching to produce a painted look. Quickly to review the steps for the mixer brush tool, we're going to we're going to paint over an image. Make sure that you open an image that you have the copyright for or that is open license for you to work in. Do not just grab any image off the internet. Save it as a Photoshop file and duplicate the background for non-destructive uh, editing purposes. I would reset your workspace to painting and then I would create several blank layers that your painting will be applied to. Figure out how you can layer different textures to create your finished design, like having a layer in the back, at the bottom, at the back, for your sky. And then maybe the next layer is for grass. And then the next layer is for the cabin that you're going to paint. That way you don't have to worry about being completely accurate for any of those one individual things. If I paint too much sky and it goes over the grass, it doesn't matter because the grass layer will come back and it will add texture to that layer. Make sure you always select the mixer brush tool, choose to clean the brush after each stroke, and most importantly, you want to sample all layers. You cannot paint on new layers unless you're sampling all layers. Make sure that you choose your textures and your brush settings from the brush presets panel, and then select the, way, the layer you wish to paint on. Like if you're gonna paint the sky, make sure you're on the sky layer. Turn off the layers that you've already painted so you can't see them anymore, or else you'll be picking up color from those layers too. And then make sure you change your brush type, brush type and size as you grow as you go to create different looks and effects. And then turn your original background layer on and off to see how much of the image you've actually painted versus how much you think that you've painted. With that quick, quick summary, let's jump over to Photoshop. I grabbed this image off of Open Graphic Arts because I own this image and I can use it to paint. And so we'll use it as an example. To get started, I want to duplicate the background layer just in case I accidentally paint on it. And then I'm going to create a bunch of new layers and rename them. So the first layer might be the, the roadway and the grass. So maybe this is grass and this layer is the road. And then maybe I'm going to paint the trees and then the, we'll call it a castle, but it's more like a, a gate. Uh, and then maybe the last layer is the sky, or maybe I don't even paint the sky because it's completely white. Create the layers and envision how you're going to paint this before you get started. Make sure that you select the layer you wish to paint on. If I'm going to paint the grass, I need to select the grass layer. If I'm gonna paint the road, select the road layer. And then grab the mixer brush tool. In my case, the mixer brush tool is almost halfway down. It looks like a paintbrush with a little drop of paint hanging up there in the top left corner. Again, if yours is not in the same place as mine, push and hold, see if you've nested it within another tool, or always push and hold the bottom, um, three dots at the bottom of the tools panel to see other options. Once you have the mixer brush tool selected, you can use any of the methods that we have learned so far this semester to select a brush. So we could come up here and hit the, 
the brush settings panel or the brushes panel and select a brush. But watch what happens if I select, I selected this random brush here, it's Kyle's Paintbox, uh, Paintbox Wet Blender 50. It immediately changed my tool to be the smudge tool, so I can't use this for the mixer brush. So you need to find a brush that will allow you to still select the mixer brush. So let's select this random brush here. This switches to the regular paintbrush. If I switch to the mixer brush and it goes back to a default, it means that that brush is not compatible with the mixer brush. My recommendation, whether you use the brushes panel or you use the brushes panel dropdown, is to go to the general brushes category and select those brushes. Notice how as I select these, it's not switching me back to a regular paintbrush. It's saying these brushes can be used with the mixer brush. Then, because these are a little boring, you can use the brush settings to adjust what it looks like. So we can add some scattering. So watch the picture at the bottom. If I add scattering, you can see how as I paint my stroke, instead of it being a straight line, it will kind of scatter the parts. So I'm gonna add a little bit of scatter. Um, you can change the shape. So you can say that I want them not to be perfect circles as I go, like the line's not gonna be even. Uh, you can, let's do, I wanna go back to scattering. I wanna add some transparency. We'll add some opacity on our options bar at the top here. Let's see. Well, while we're here, let's do spacing, add some space between our lines. Um, let's add some fuzziness to the edge. Maybe we don't want whatever we're painting, it's not gonna have a hard edge. Whatever you wanna do, change all the different textures that you're going to paint. So maybe this one's good here. See how there's a little bit of roughness, it's not exactly um, even, and now I wanna paint with that. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the size of it so that you can see it on screen. Now you're gonna to wanna to choose a brush size that is appropriate for the thing that you're painting, but I need you to see it on the video, so mine's probably gonna be bigger than it needs to be. Let's move that out of the way. So now with the mixer brush tool selected, I wanna start painting. But before I paint on the grass layer, I wanna make sure it pulls the colors from the background layer. And so you need to make sure sample all layers on your options bar is selected. All the other options you can click through and figure out what you want to do. The only options I need you to make sure are selected is there's two over here. It says load the brush after each stroke. You want that to be selected, or I'm sorry, not selected. And then you want to clean the brush after each stroke. You want that to be selected. So now, no matter where I paint, it will pull, let's make this smaller. It will pull the color that it's painting from the picture. So with that first stroke, it's hard to see. Let's see how it's creating texture as I paint this. This actually might be a really good texture to use for the castle. So if we were to undo all that, I'm trying to paint the grass, right? But I figured out this texture actually looks really good on the castle. I could come up to the castle layer and maybe decrease the size a little bit. And maybe I have two castle layers, one just for the texture of the wall. And you need to bounce back and forth by turning your layers on and off so that you can see where you're painting and where you haven't been painting. You can also combine this, see how I'm trying to paint this archway? And it's doing a pretty good job with the texture, but it's definitely not staying inside the lines. I could make a selection before I do any of this. Let's erase all that. So maybe I grab my quick selection tool and I make a selection. Well, make sure you're on a layer that has that. And I make a selection of this archway. And we'll pretend that I did a really good job for time's sake here. Okay, so we refine this. If I select the inverse, now I have everything except for that archway selected. So now if I go back to the castle layer, grab my mixer brush tool and I start painting, I don't have to worry about painting inside that archway. I just have to worry about applying the texture that I want. In this case, I probably would have wanted to select the whole castle so that when I paint the far right side, I'm not going off either. But now as I paint in there, if I turn off my original layers and I deselect, you can see that I'm only painting that texture where I want that texture to go. And that actually is a really good texture for the castle. 
Now you might need to come back and paint over the details. So maybe you add another layer and you make that the castle two layer. And then you can turn off the layer that you've already painted and only focus on painting the details back in. So let's do this one more time. Let's um, go back to the grass layer. I have my mixer brush selected. I wanna go to the brush settings panel and let's try to find a texture that might work for the grass. And so as I click through here, um, for some reason, everyone tends to love the texture that's literally blades of grass. Please don't use that texture. Um, but maybe, maybe this texture works and maybe I could flip the direction of it so that Let's do this. Ah, oh, there we go. So that as I paint grass, it might have a grass texture. So let's see how that works. So the grass layer is selected. I have sample all layers selected. I turned off my painting on the castle so I don't have to worry about it getting in the way. And then I have um, clean the brush after each stroke selected. So now I can come through and I can try to paint the grass. Paint a few strokes and then turn your original layers off. If that's achieving your goal, and I, and I had to make my brush much bigger, if I made it smaller, I think it would be a better effect. If that's achieving the texture that you're looking for, keep applying that texture. But make sure that when you're done, you can still see the brush strokes that you created. So your goal should be to paint, turn off your background layers, and then everything that you see should be a painted picture. Um, when, I, when I look at your projects, I'm gonna turn off your background layers and see what areas you have uh, painted and I've clearly produced different textures too. I have this rough um, rock like texture on the castle which is great because that's what the castle is made out of and then there's a soft kind of mossiness texture to the grass which is what grass texture is in this picture. Experiment with as many brushes as possible. Don't try to paint everything in one layer or even any one item on one layer. If you figure out that one texture works really good for the bulk of the castle, paint the whole castle in and then add another layer on top of that for all the highlights or all the shadows that you want to add back in. You may want to combine it with some hand painting. If after you're done painting, it's really hard for you to, let's grab the regular paintbrush. Maybe it's really hard for you to get that drop shadow in with the mixer brush. Maybe select black and find a good brush. Let's zoom in here. Whoops, that's not the key command to zoom in. And maybe you come in with a brush and on a new layer, you can hand paint, make sure, I'm gonna grab my stylus for this. You can hand paint that shadow back in. This is not the right texture for that, it's too hard. I would wanna get like, kind of like a chalk pastel, I think. Um, brush but you can come and you can hand paint some of the details back in not everything has to be mixer brush but the majority of it should you're, you're looking for textures when you're using the mixer brush not specifically all of the fine detail and now when I zoom out you can see I've added that shadow back in and it looks more natural than it did before we can toggle that on and off it's really important that when you're painting you use layers because it allows you to keep your editing separate. If you decide that you did a horrible job on the grass, all you have to do is select it and delete it and it's gone and you can start all over. If you paint all on the background copy layer and something that you did two hours ago is wrong, you'll have to redo the whole thing.